Yo, this is your boy Master Aubrey back with another live video for you brothers and sisters as a part of my spiritual warfare strategy series. This part of this video is going to be about hitting hints and contracts in witchcraft. I'm going to repeat this title one more time. Hidden covenants and contracts in witchcraft. And this is something that my spirit wanted me to talk about. So I'm going to bring it to the book that I'm reading about, Prayers Against Witchcraft. I'm going to read some stuff from here. And I'm going to read you some scriptures that you guys could um, study on your own. And before we end this video off, we're going to definitely end it off with a prayer for those who are dealing with the occult and dealing with witchcraft and need deliverance from that. We're going to do a prayer with that. So with that being said, before we get started in this video, got to make my disclaimers. If you are not into the scripture, not trying to follow the word of God, this is not a video for you. If you're a person that is an unbeliever, don't want to be saved, you don't want to be delivered, this is not a video for you. And last but not least, because I, I, I speak with adulterated content, from time to time I do curse my videos. If you have sensitive ears, this is not a video for you. So with that being said, I said what I needed to say. Now, what are hidden covenants and contracts in witchcraft? Well, what is witchcraft? For those who may not know what witchcraft is, I'm going to break it down. Now, witchcraft manipulation. Um, manipulation simply means the process of using witchcraft, occult, or spiritual demonic power in order to influence, dominate, or manage or control another person's life for destructive purposes. This can be done directly or indirectly. This is the scope of Satan's system in order to enslave a person. Witchcraft is all that Satan is being excommunicated from heaven. So witchcraft is all as Satan himself because that's where it started from. You understand? He's the father of all lies. Um, he uses his manipulations to influence Eve to sin and then use her as an agent to make Adam to sin. This is how he's still working in today's society. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever before. The Holy Spirit is working inside of the spirit radiates. No, let me say that again. The Holy Spirit working inside of your spirit radiates power, which repels all witchcraft manipulations against you so your solution to witchcraft deceptions your 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 solution to witchcraft attacks is the holy spirit now for those individuals who may not have a personal relationship with yeshua hamashiach jesus christ this is very important for you to understand especially if you don't have no understanding of the word of god and you are dealing and dabbling with things you have no business dealing with now, I'm a person that was in the occult. I was, I was delivered from the occult. I turned my life to God three years ago. And the Most High gave me a, a, a near-death experience type of situation where I met the Most High. And he started to change my life gradually. I'm still in the process of it. But he started to expose a lot of the stuff that I used to deal with because I used to dibble and dabble with the occult. And I'm here to share my testimonies and share what I know based on what the Most High taught me. So if you guys are dealing with the effects, the negative effects of this um, spiritual warfare, this is very important for you guys to listen. Now, I'm not telling you who to, I'm telling you what to do and how to live your life, but if you are seeking help, it's best that you take the advice. You know what I mean? That's just common sense. So... Let's go to scriptures and see what the, the word of God has to say about um, spiritual witchcraft and stuff like that. So in Leviticus 19 verse 31, it says, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritualists for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. All right. So let's break it down. Nigga man, stop. Leviticus 19 verse 31, it says, do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritualists. Anytime you guys are dealing with the supernatural, you should always be turning to the word of God for assistance and help. You should always be turning to the most high. That's what the Holy Spirit is called, the helper. He will guide you into all the truth. 
but to an unbeliever that does not have a belief or foundation in God and doesn't seek to have Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, they're going to turn to witchcraft. They're going to turn to ancestors. They're going to turn to other spirits. And this is what opens them up to psychic warfare. The simple fact that you turn to these spiritualists or mediums, readers, psychic readers, about your destiny, about what's, what's in store for your family, what's in your love life, what's your astrology. The minute you turn to these mediums and spiritualists, you have already defiled yourself. Because now you have given the devil legal access to your bloodline. Not just yourself, but to your bloodline. And God said he will seek. This, this sin is so serious that God will even attack your future generations. He said to you, he said you visit the iniquities of your fathers to the fourth, the third and fourth generations. That's how serious witchcraft is. So a lot of times people are experiencing a lot of um situations in their homes that they're experiencing um a loss of finances they're experiencing a lack in their love life like every time they're trying to get in a relationship things always go left um people are not liking you these things are signs of witchcraft activity now let's say you're yourself are not dealing with witchcraft you have hidden covenants and contracts based on what your 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 ancestors did family did someone in your family is dealing with witchcraft someone someone in your family is a mason someone in your family is in a fraternity that deals with sat satanism let's keep it real a lot of people are not going to tell you everything in your family your family has a lot of secrets so if you notice in your your love life is not happening the way it is you know you certain you notice certain infirmities or diseases happening within a family line like let's say your mom's got diabetes your grandma had diabetes. Everybody in your family got diabetes or obesity. This is curses. These are generational curses. So generational curses are hitting covenants and contracts. You know what I'm saying? Because when you open a door to the spiritual world, what these demons that you're making contracts with, this is what they're not telling you. They're telling you, oh, you can get this thing, and if you give up this, you're going to get that. But they're not telling you the other stuff that's in the fine print sometimes you guys do money rituals this is for the you dudes in the conscious community you're doing a money ritual you're doing a love ritual to feel more love because you feel so goddamn insecure about yourself right but you're not what what the ritual is not going to tell you and once the hidden covenants within that ritual is like yo you know what you're not only sacrificing your soul but you're sacrificing your future kids you know you have the door wide open for the enemy because this devil walks around like a like a proud lion seeking who he may devour let's go into another verse all right so that's leviticus 31 verse 19 verse 31 my bad this is leviticus 20 verse 6 he said i will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritualists to prostitute themselves by following them and i will cut them off from their people this is how serious this is. The minute you turn to the occult, instead of turning to God for your help, God said, I will cut you off from amongst them. Let's look at an example, a perfect example of what happened to Saul when he turned to spiritualists and mediums because Saul had a chance to repent, get right with the Most High. He chose not to do that. If you know the story of Saul, I'm not going to get into it. So he said in First Chronicles 10, verse 13, King Saul, he, he devil and dabbled with the occult, and that's what caused God to kill him because first off, he was unrepentant. He didn't he ask for forgiveness when he, when he um, disobeyed God. So instead of looking for forgiveness and repentance, he, instead of it's him coming to God saying, you know, Father God, I apologize if I disobeyed your commands. You told me to do X, Y, and Z, and I did my own thing. Pride is a killer, man. And this is what happens when you now are seeking help because you're, in a, you're stuck in a gem. Instead of going back to the source where you can get your help from, which is God, the most high, you go to a spiritualist, a medium, a psychic reader to find out your future. And this is what get pissed God off. 
So in First Chronicles 10, verse 13, it says, Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord, and he did not keep the word of the Lord, and even consulted a medium for guidance. See, this was the final nail in the coffin. He was first unfaithful because he didn't follow the commands of the Most High. He did not keep the word of the Lord, meaning that he backslide. Right? It's a gradual process. Just giving you a hint. It's a gradual process. And he even consulted a medium for guidance. This would have offended the most high the most because he did not seek God for guidance. And how much black people in this society today do not seek God in his word, do not seek God for guidance, but you're seeking spiritualists, mediums, astrology for things that you could ask God for. But the simple fact you wouldn't ask God for it is because you don't want to do it God's way. You want it your way. And this is where God leaves you, guys and ladies, to a reprobate mind. This is why black people are suffering the way they're suffering in the United States. We just had a, a mass um, shooting in Texas, right, in the Walmart. I heard everybody talking about it. But you see, my spirit is calm about it because you know what? This is the judgment. I, I know y'all niggas don't want to hear that, but this is the judgment that's happening to America. All these things that's happening in America is the judgment because you have hardened your heart to the ways of the Most High. You follow paganism. You follow witchcraft. You do occult shit, and you expect to be blessed by God. How 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 is that working for y'all? How you expect to be blessed by the Most High when you don't follow the commandments of the Most High, you don't honor the Most High, you blaspheme the Most High, you disrespect the Most High, but you need help. You need help. You're always a victim. You see, this is stuff that you don't understand. When you create hidden covenants and contracts and you dibble and dabble with the occult and the witchcraft, this is the result. Mass shootings. And but you're going to blame it on God? Oh, God didn't help us. No, God could help you, but you never seek God. The, your first response is to seek man's help. He said, do not seek spiritualists or mediums, for they, shall, they will defile you. You are defiled people. This is going to keep it a buck. Want another verse? Got another verse for y'all. It says in 1 Samuel 15, verse 23, and this is how... God looks at witchcraft and rebellion because he ties these two things in together in this verse. He says, for rebellion is like the sin of divination. Divination is when you use those psychic readers to divine your destiny, your future. Witchcraft. He said, rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance. It's like the evil of adultery. Adultery is when you worship other gods or you make graven images, which you guys in America do all over the world. Not just America, all over the world. You understand? That's why the world is so corrupted. That's why you look at the society so defiled. Because everything you make is an idol. You guys make yourself idols. And in the sight of God, that's an offense. That's an abomination. You understand? Instead of giving God the glory, you give yourself the glory. Instead of giving God the glory, you give another man the glory. You praise men more than you praise your creator who are in heaven. And you expect to be blessed? How do you expect to be blessed when you don't go to the creator for your bread and butter? Right? So it says in rebellion, it's like the sin of divination and the arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. This is what he said to Saul. When you reject the word of God and God rejects your prayers, that's why a lot of you dudes, when you pray, it's not that God doesn't hear your prayer. You are so hardened of hearts. You have so been caught up in the flesh. You are so caught up in pride, in arrogance, in rebellion. You are so against the word of God. You are so against what God has in store for you guys' lives that it's become an offense to God. So even your prayers that you pray, things you ask for, I heard ladies that saying, oh, I need a good man. Some of you women like, oh, I need a good man in my life. Well, guess what? 
if you're practicing witchcraft and then trying to get God to get you a good man, your prayers are an offense to God. You guys who want good women or you want a nice house, a nice car, you're praying to God for the wrong things, especially if your heart ain't right with God, because God don't look at your outward appearance. He look at your inward appearance. He look at your heart, because what's in your heart is who you really are. It said, out of the heart comes the issues of life. And when God looks at your inward man, he sees these covenants. He sees these hidden covenants and contracts. He sees these soul ties. He sees all these things that you have made idols in your heart. Things that you're, you're even unaware of yourself, right? And when you don't bring these things to God in prayer, how you expect God to answer your prayer? God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God will never change and God cannot be moved. God will always be God. So you can't expect God to move on your behalf if you're not doing your part of the deal. God only moves by one thing. Obedience, well, two things actually. Obedience to his word and faith. See, faith is something that a lot of people misunderstand. But I'm going to speak it from a metaphysical perspective because I come from the metaphysical community. That's what I used to deal with. You have something called the law of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. How do you get the spiritual move? How do you get the spiritual world to work on your behalf? Through faith. Faith. He said, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added onto you. God already knows what you want. God already knows you inside and out. He knows all your desires, what you want. His desires for your life is the only thing that will satisfy you. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. God's will for your life is the only thing that will satisfy your soul because he has created you. He's the author and the finisher of your life. See, when you try to do things and deviate from the blueprints of what God has in store for your life, obviously you're going to go down the, the path of witchcraft. And this is what's going to cause an offense in God. And, 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 and cause the rift between you and God to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Because you want things your own way. You get enticed by your own lust, your own desires. Instead of letting God fulfill those desires by being obedient to his word. See, y'all don't want to put in the work. Y'all want shit that's easy, easy done. Y'all don't want to come to God and say, God, I need money. I need a new job. Father God, can you open a door for me to do this new job, I wanted this career, blah, 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 right? But when you get the response from God, God is like, yo, I need you to do this, that, and a third. And you're like, oh, I'm not going to do all that. I need it right now. You're living in the now. God sees ahead of time. He sent, he, God is looking at your future. You're living in the now. God is seeing your future. He's saying, okay, you want this job so damn bad? What, what I see because I am your creator and I'm in the spiritual world because God is a spirit. And they say to worship God is to worship God in spirit and truth. So God as a spirit being sees ahead of time. He sees 5, 20, 30 years in the future if you was to be at this job. What would happen for, for you at this job if this job is the best thing for you? And God wouldn't give you something that he know that's going to be a detriment to you. You feel what I'm saying? God's ways are not our ways. His thinking is not our thinking. So when God do something for you, you got to understand, yes, it comes with a price. It comes with sacrifice. It comes, that sacrifice is required on your behalf. It's not that God cannot do things for you. It's not that God can't bring a nice woman or man in your life. But what are you willing to sacrifice in order to move God by faith, because God only moves with faith. If you have faith in God, then God will move your mountain. But if you're praying to God about the mountain and talking about all, all these bills, all of this and all of that, then to God, that's not a real genuine prayer because first off, when you're praying to God about all these bills and all of that, it's like you don't have faith in God. That's how you're crying. You're like, God... You know, I don't know if you could do it. You know, you're just crying to God about that. There's nothing wrong 
with crying to God about your problems. But you got to cry to God knowing that he is the answer. You got to cry to God knowing that he's the solution. See, black people just pray and ask people to pray for them, but they go back to doing the same thing they did before. Oh, pray for me. Help me. Give me a Psalms. Give me something to make me feel good. You just want a quick fucking fix. That's why everybody who wants a quick fix goes to witchcraft. You go to psychic readers. You go to mediums. You seek out spiritualists. You seek out your astrology. Oh, I can't fuck with this sign because I'm a, I'm in a Gemini and I can't fuck with a Leo and the Leo can't fuck with a Capricorn or all, whatever bullshit. All of that is witchcraft. All of that is an abomination to God and God will remove you and cut you off from the tree of life. You're not even aware. The minute you started reading astrology, you got cut off. The minute you start seeing a psychic reading, you got cut off. The minute you start entertaining those type of thoughts of blasphemy, rebellion, God cut you off. And you wouldn't even know because you're not sensitive to things in the spirit. If you never had the Ruha, which is the Holy Spirit, and you never had a personal relationship with God, you wouldn't know what it's like to be cut off from God. Since you since you've been so cut off from God from since you was born, you didn't know God. You don't have a personal relationship with God. Everything that you were fed or taught about God was given to you by the world. So you don't know God. You could say, Oh God, I did all this works in your name, and he'll say, I never knew you. He said, I will never knew I never knew you because you never had a personal relationship with God. And it's not based on church. You could say, God, I went to church. We, we was praising your name all the time. It's like, I never, I don't know you. And the reason why I say I don't fucking know you is because you don't have no personal relationship with him. See, I have a personal relationship with him. I don't have to go to church. I don't got to slap the tambourine. I ain't got to freaking scream at the top of my lungs to be on some emotional shit. I have a personal relationship with God because I read his word. I seek him in his word. If I have a problem at my job, I seek him in his word. If I have a problem in my relationship, I seek him in his word. If I have a problem in my family, I seek him in his word. I go to sleep at night, I'm seeking God. I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm praying to God. This is, what, this is a lifestyle. When you turn your life to God, it is a lifestyle. That is the sacrifice. A broken and contrite heart. He will not despise. You got to come to God with a humble heart. You guys come with pride and arrogance like God is your genie. Motherfucker, God is your heavenly father. If you want to take your goddamn life right now, he take that shit. He's keeping it real with y'all. He will take you out of here. So don't come at God like the people in the occult that do magic tricks. God is not for magic tricks. God knows your heart. God knows your, your, your ins and outs. He, God already sees your thoughts that you already, you already planned out for the future. You can't come to God anyway. You can't read the Bible anyway. Every time I do videos, I tell people, yo, you, when you read the Bible, you got to come from a perspective. Look at your attitude. How are you addressing the Bible? How are you addressing God? You see, you want to address your boss like that. If you were at the job, you're not going to address your boss with disrespect because you know that your boss holds your check. Right? So you want to address your boss with no disrespect because you know that, yo, your boss cut the check. And if you disrespect your boss, you'll be without a job. So that same and reverence that you have for your boss, right? You keep, you keep your calm. You don't disrespect. You hold your tongue. You bite your tongue. The same respect you need to have for the most high. Because the most high have control over your existence. He has control over this life and the next. But y'all, y'all so, y'all so, you confined your trust in man. And how many times that man deceived you and betrayed you. You knew this from the time you was born. You had family members that betrayed you. You had friends that betrayed you. You had people that, that you, you had sex with betrayed you. The, the nature of humans is, is corrupted. You cannot trust no man. 
If you're going to follow God, you do it his way or it's the highway. It's no other way. He said, I am the truth, the way, and the light. No one comes to the Father but through me. Y'all trying to do it every other way. So like what I was saying as an example earlier, you're trying to get money. You're trying to get a job. So instead of going to God and your Heavenly Father in prayer and make a sacrifice by praying and fasting, that's too much for you. You want to eat anyway. So you go to a, a psychic reader. You go to a juju man. You go to one of these babalows. You understand these sorcerers. Oh, I need a money ritual. He tells you you got to pay X amount of money to do this ritual. You ain't got to do nothing. But guess what? The minute you do that ritual, you're cursed. Your finances is cursed. Your love life is cursed. Your whole existence is cursed. You start getting sick out of nowhere because you have given your soul over to the devil by affiliating and associating with such things. God cut his, God cut his Holy Spirit away from you. God took his life back. So in the spirit world, you're dead. You might still be alive and living, but in the spirit world, you're dead. Because God will not associate with evil. And if you are participating in any one of these things, witchcraft, voodoo, Santeria, whatever it may be, I don't care if you don't like this video and you don't like what I'm saying, you are cursed. That's why black people are cursed. I'm keeping it real with black people, man. You wondering why we've been in slavery for so many years? It's because we backslide from the most high. We are the original Hebrews. There's no other person that's no other set of people that's been through much drama, um, slavery as black people. If you look in the Bible, it, it gives us a clear description in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, all of that. All of that. We are the original Hebrews. It ain't it's not meant for the Gentiles or the other nations to uphold the laws of the most high. It's meant for black people. People of Mexican descent, Spanish people, we are the Hebrew Israelites. So that means we uphold the law and the commandments. And when we don't uphold the law and the commandments of the Most High, this is what happens. This is what we have. A modern day Sodom and Gomorrah in America. That when you don't uphold the laws of the Most High, you have a modern day shootout at Walmart in Texas. And you niggas is mad? Why? Why are you mad? This is what you get when you disrespect the most high. This is what you get when you don't fucking follow the laws. Oh, you mad what you're going to protest? God don't hear your prayers. And the reason why God don't want to hear your prayers, because you're not repenting. You're not sincerely sorry. You're not sincerely sorry. Let's keep it a buck. Black people, you're not sincerely sorry. I watch all you guys' news feed on my Facebook. I watch how y'all disrespect the Most High's name, slander the Most High's name, and then you expect a blessing, you expect goodness in your life, you expect that you'll get your land back. You ain't getting shit back, black people, till you get right with the Most High. It starts in your heart. You want to you wanna worry about the community? Fuck to saving black people. Because you can't help another brother if you're trapped in bondage yourself. It's like the blind leading the blind. How could you help another brother or sister when you are trapped in sin and bondage? Please answer me that. <laughs> Y'all niggas is out of your mind. So when you come to my channel, I'm going to speak the gospel, I'm going to speak the truth, and I'm going to speak in niggery. That's why I always see a disclaimer in my videos and tell you, brothers and sisters, this is not a video for those who don't like adulterated content because I'm going to give it to you uncensored and raw. It's no other way to give you the scriptures but uncensored and raw because when I give it to you any other way, you guys think it's of it like on a, on a Christian level. I am not a Christian. I'm going to keep the buck with you. Today's Christian and Christianity is a motherfucking joke. Today's people who are supposed to be called Christians or Hebrew Israelites are a motherfucking joke. Because you don't live by the laws and the statutes and the commandments. You do whatever you want and you justify it as righteousness. You take the scriptures and you flip it to your own liking.
You don't follow precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. No. You guys do whatever you want to justify your whoredom and your lust and your, and, and, and your crazy carnal desires. But in this video, I'm talking about hidden contracts that you make with the devil every time that you guys subscribe to occult things, spiritual things, going outside of the boundaries of the Most High, going outside of his word and what he says about those things, going to seek spiritualists and mediums, playing with Ouija boards, watching cartoons and video games that got stuff that's in your cult. Let's keep it real. When you play these games, a lot of these games have occult things in it. Most High told me to throw out all my games. It was a hard thing to do, but that's what the Most High ordered me to do. Because I know if I don't do it, I know what happened last time. And I'm not trying to lose my life disobeying the Most High. I'm just keeping it real. Because it was a time where I had a lot of cult pictures. Because I used to do sigil artwork and all that. Most High told me, took those pictures down. I didn't listen. God was like, I got your life in my hand. If you don't take those pictures down, it's over for you. You feel what I'm saying? God the Father don't play that shit. I look at God the Son as Jesus Christ. Oh, he's the good shepherd. He came to save us and redeem us. Yes, he did. But you disrespect his honor. You disrespect his death. You disrespect the crucifixion. So guess what? The judgment is coming for your niggas ass. When Jesus come back, coming back with a marriage of angels. It ain't going to be no peaceful Jesus. Not what the white man tell you in, in, uh, uh, in, 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 in religion. Our Christ is a warrior and a fighter. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. God will take your ass out of here. And the only reason y'all getting to do what y'all want to do and talk the way that y'all talk, because he allows it by his mercy and grace. When that time comes... For us to do war against principalities, powers of darkness, in the physical, you niggas, is gonna, it's going to be too late for y'all to repent. It's going to be a little bit too late for y'all to repent and say, yo, God, I want to get right with you. It's like, no, it's too late. It's time for you niggas to die straight up. I'm not these other dudes on here preaching the gospel in some nice... Um, peaceful fucking way. This shit needs to be taught the way it needs to be taught, like a, like a, like a G, like a G. You gotta be, you gotta teach these niggas the truth, like a street nigga, man. You can't teach this shit on some mediocrity shit. You, you making, you making mockery of God, man. A lot of you dudes, y'all teach the scriptures, and y'all don't even live the lifestyle. Y'all, y'all, y'all mocking God. God would not be mocked, man. So I'm gonna preach this. I'm going to preach this gospel with strength and power. And if you can't stand the truth, stay out of the damn kitchen. Because I'm bringing the heat for y'all niggas. And I got one more verse before we get into this for the prayer. Because I told you guys I was going to do a prayer for y'all. Alright? So, this is what's going on in America. And this is what happened back in the days. Alright? So in Leviticus 20 verse 27 it says, a man or woman who's a medium or spiritualist among you must be put to death. You are, you are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. So those motherfuckers will be practicing all that shit. You know who you are. If you're watching this video, you practice witchcraft, you practice any type of spirituality outside the word of God. This is what, this is what the judgment of the Most High says in Leviticus 20 verse 27. A man or a woman who's a medium or spiritualist among you must be put to death. That is the law. You don't see nobody putting to death none of these niggas today. You niggas are seeking their help. And that's what's causing the problems in America today. Because you are seeking the devil's help. And keeping yourself more in bondage and bondage and bondage. So he said you are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. Back in the days, niggas was getting stoned to death for that type of shit. It was more control. You see, when, when America gave all these people all these rights and laws and all this nice shit, this is what caused lawlessness. See, lawlessness brings forth destruction. 
Sodom and Gomorrah was a perfect example of lawlessness. Lawless societies get destroyed. Any civilization that practice homosexuality, lawlessness, witchcraft, they get destroyed. You can get mad all you want. You know this history doesn't play around. History repeats itself. America is next, man. So with that being said, um, let me see, let me see, let me see what I'm saying. Uh, one more, one more, one more, one more. Revelations 21 verse 8. It said, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, and those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all the liars, they will be co-signed to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. You brothers and sisters, this is serious. This is Revelations 21 verse 8. To the cowardly, you bitch-made niggas. Yeah, I'm talking to you niggas. You bitch-ass niggas. You unbelievers. You vile creatures. You murdering motherfuckers. You sexually immoral niggas. And those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all you liars. You will be co-signed to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is your second death. I got to say it that way because it makes more sense to say it that way. Why? Because it ain't all the way to say this shit. Because when we say it the nice way, you ignore it. You mock the, you mock the scriptures. You mock the, you mock the Heavenly Father. So I'm going to say it the way that you guys will interpret it. I say it the way that you niggas can comprehend it. You bitch ass niggas. You coward motherfuckers, you unbelieving ass niggas, you sexually defiled creatures, you all got a, a place in the burning place of fire, the lake of fire, if you don't get your ass right with the most high. I'm saying just like that. Don't tell me, oh, stop cursing in your videos. Oh, you can't do that. Don't tell me what to do. You niggas are living in sin and you perpetuate sin and witchcraft and evil. Stop the shit. It's getting out of hand now. When you see people going up in schools, Walmarts, and churches shooting you dumb niggas up, and you all you could do is say, we forgive him. That means you got no ounce of religious. Let me let me say let me say that again. You niggas don't got no ounce of righteousness in your bones, man. You niggas don't got no ounce of righteousness in your heart. That means you're full of evil. You're full of dead man bones. You're hypocrites. When you can sit there and say you forgive the person who murdered your family member in blood. And say we forgive him. Are you out of your fucking mind? This is the state that my people's in. This is the state that my motherfucking people is in. But they get at me and other brothers and sisters who preach the gospel and speak the truth about this shit. But you talking about we crazy, we out our goddamn mind. You damn right. You damn right. I'm going to die for my God because at least I know that's the same logical, rational book that will guide my life and has been blessing my life. God's been blessing me with his word. God's been strengthening me in my mind. He's given me stability in my life. He saved me from the occult world. I know what that life was like. I know what it ends out to be, death, fire and brimstone. And all I'm here to do is warn you brothers, look, and you sisters, stop it. You want this shit to end? You want black people to stop being killed? For no reason? You want police brutality to stop? Stop doing your wicked, your wicked deeds, man. Stop entertaining lawlessness. You have to be a representative of the Most High. We can't call ourselves gods and goddesses. We can't call ourselves Hebrew Israelites when we don't even uphold the Most High's laws and commandments. Let's keep it a buck, man. Let's keep it a buck. Look, I want to say this prayer from this book, and I hope 
any brother or sister who needs to be delivered from witchcraft tonight, you will turn your life to God. You understand that you will you will open your heart to the most high and allow the most high to pour his spirit, his ruha into your life. So I'm going to say this prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, let the thunder of God locate this man on the throne of witchcraft against the viewer who may be watching this video right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let every seed of witchcraft in the viewer's life be roasted now in the name of Jesus. Let every altar of witchcraft in the viewer's family and home be destroyed now by holy ghost fire in jesus name let the thunder of god from the third scatter beyond redemption the foundation of witchcraft in the viewer's household in the viewer's family both mother and father's side now in jesus name let every stronghold of refuge of witches assigned to the viewer's life be destroyed and scattered now in Jesus' name. Let every hiding place and secret place of witchcraft in the viewer's family be ransacked by the Holy Ghost bulldozer now in Jesus' name. Father God, let every local and international witchcraft network of witches set up against the viewer who is watching this video, who needs to be delivered from witchcraft and the occult now, be destroyed and disfigured and dis dis disorganized now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we decree and declare this in Jesus' name that you set the captive free for who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. That's a good spiritual warfare prayer because I said some, top, some stuff from the top of my head and then I read from this book as well. But um, leave your comments in the comment section below if you guys are interested in the prayers that I do. Hit me up my DM. I do custom made prayers. I do have prayers on my YouTube channel that deal with generational curses, breaking soul ties, and much more. And you guys and ladies have a beautiful night. Peace.